Creating a full 3D character can be a very intimidating and difficult task, and there's many ways to do it. But today we're going to look at a quick and efficient way to make either a base model that you can use for sculpting, or something that will be able to get you a low poly finished character ready for animation. As you see right here, uh, I have a quick little example uh, with a armature and all. So if I uh, go into pose mode, you can see that we can rotate this dude uh, around by the bones. And this is what we're going to be making today. It's relatively easy. So let's hide this for the time being. And the first things we're going to do is we're going to go to edit, preferences, we're going to go into the add-ons and we're going to go into add mesh extra objects and enable it. So when that is enabled, pressing shift A will allow you to add a mesh, single vert, add single vert. Now that doesn't do anything because it's just one vertice, but we're going to use the skin modifier on it. But before we get to that, we're going to add a mirror modifier. I'll show you in a second what that does. Now, next up, we add the skin modifier, and you can see the vertice turns into a little bit of a cube. And if we now go into edit mode and we extrude that vertice, you can see it creates a mesh around it. Well, this is only a cube, it's not very good for character modeling. So, one thing we're going to add to that as well is a subdivision surface. Going back into object mode here for a second. We can see it's still relatively low poly, so going into levels of viewports, if you are doing this for a 3D render and not for like a game object or anything like that, uh, you can set the render to be a little bit higher. Uh, but we're going to stick to like viewport level 3, for instance. And now it's more of a capsule that we can work with. Now, the only issue is, back into edit mode uh, where we were working in before, we can't really see the vertices being connected all too well. So if you go up to the top right corner here and toggle X-Ray, now you can suddenly see the lines connecting the vertices, and we can start working on this thing. So let's use these two vertices as the body. We're going to raise that up a little bit, and by pressing Ctrl A, you can scale these vertices up and down. You can't use usual like scaling with S because it's a one-dimensional point, you can't scale it. So it's specifically uh, with the skin modifier you need to use Ctrl A while uh, having a vertice selected to scale it up. So let's make this a little bit um, wider on the bottom and then uh, to make the neck you just take the upside of the body here, you extrude it up just a little bit and then you extrude it out again to make the neck. Then you extrude it out again to make the head. And we scale up the head a little. We extrude it out again to make the head be round. And you'll just have to, uh, through trial and error, try to figure out what looks good for your specific uh, need and what you're wanting to make. But this is the basic idea. So now we can take this vertice here and extrude it out and as you see it extrudes it out into two directions pressing x to lock it to the x-axis and sometimes it glitches out a little bit and you have to move around a couple of vertices uh, but that's what this mirror modifier is doing the one we added before if i turn it off you'll see it only does it to the uh one direction that i extruded into but having the mirror modifier means that our model is going to be exactly symmetrical, which then, for rigging purposes and animation purposes, is very nice to have. So, uh, we have the arms. Maybe we want the arms to be a little bit lower onto the body, a little bit more like that, so it flows a bit better into the neck. For arms, you probably also want an elbow point, so you make an elbow point by uh, pressing Ctrl R, and then you can add an extra vertice here move it back a little bit so it has a bit of a bend to the elbow and then we do the same thing here with the legs so we extrude out into the x direction and then we extrude this out towards the bottom and you can see that these vertices probably both are a little bit too thin so we make them thicker and this definitely needs to be a little bit up higher as well maybe actually we want to have a extra vertice here 
And this is how easily you can add and, and change things to influence the shape of your character. He's got a bit of a, uh, a fat up bottom, which is, is something that I quite like in this case, actually. Uh, maybe add a little bit more to this as well. And as you can see, we now more or less have a functioning character. Same thing as with the arms, Control R to add a point so that we have a knee, move it out a little so that it's bended and we have a character more or less. So now over here we can apply the mirror modifier and if we now go back over into edit mode, we see that these points have also been added for the left side. And the fantastic thing about this method is that here in the skin modifier, we can apply shade smooth uh, right in there. So it looks a little less blocky, but we can also create armature. So if we press that button, all the points and lines we just made have now been turned into bones with automatic weight painting adjusted to them as well. So going into pose mode, we can now take this bone and we can rotate it around and we can make him wave a little. And it actually works remarkably well. Now, would I recommend you do this for a character? I would not. Uh, if you're doing a humanoid character like we have made here, at least the basis for one, you probably want to use Rigify. I have a tutorial on that, it'll be linked down below in the description and up top in the card. Uh, because uh, then you have a full IK control rig and it just animates a lot nicer. If you're using this technique for something that's a little less humanoid or maybe something that is just not a character at all but needs to be animated anyway, uh, it's a very powerful tool that you already have a built-in armature just after modeling. You don't have to do anything else. You can obviously also add in IK controls yourself here. Again, if you want to know more about that, I have a video all about making a custom IK rig down below in the description too. And from here we could just add like, I don't know, add a uh, UV sphere and, and, and make some really quick crude eyes. Then select the armature that we've made. Uh, and go into edit mode, select the head bone, go back into object mode, select the eyes, select the armature, control P, parent to bone. And now here in pose mode, uh, the armature itself is just not great, so it, it's hard to move the head by itself. Again, use Rigify, please. Uh, but as you can see, uh, the eyes move with uh, with the head, so we've got that. And you can add a nose and a mouth and all kind of like a hair if you want to as well. But that's the basic idea of making a character using the skin modifier in Blender. It's quick, it's easy, it's useful for much more than just making simple characters. But making characters is a very good use of it because character creation usually is very intimidating, very difficult to ask. I would recommend you use this as the basis for sculpting, uh, because if you want to make a more detailed character, you're going to have to use uh, the sculpting tab. But if you're going for a low poly character or a simple character, something like, I don't know, Fall Guys or uh, a 3D version of Among Us, that, that kind of style, uh, this will be plenty and it's a very easy and quick way to create your characters.